as well. I'm trying. Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Brandi Walker, Diamond Ambassador with Plexus, and I'm pretty sure I know all of you guys on the call tonight. Um, but Kelly and I, with actually all the jewels, we have been discussing a very important topic um, that we, you know, just felt like it was an important enough topic that we needed to do a call on it. Um, as y'all know, you know, we, there's a, been a lot of things going on um, in the world in the last um, couple of years. Compliance is nothing new, though. This is not something that, you know, just because of the pandemic or something like that, that, you know, all of a sudden we have to pay attention to it. It's not. This has been going on um, for quite a few years, pretty much since I joined Plexus, but it's gotten, I will say I've been with Plexus for seven years and it has gotten more, um, a little more strict. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, a couple of years ago, and I don't remember exactly what year Kelly may remember, but um, I don't know if y'all remember a company called Advocare. And this company has been around as, I mean, I, I want to say like 30 years, just like a really, really, really long time. And I knew a lot of people um, that, you know, were high up in this business, their families depended on it. Um, great people, you know, I, I don't necessarily um, take their products, but I, my husband has taken them in the past. But their company um, was shut down almost overnight, y'all. The companies, you can still have customers, but you cannot build a team anymore. Um, and it was devastating to so many people because, you know, just like us, they were working this business there. I mean, they, people had quit jobs, their families, you know, totally dependent on this income. And we feel like it's important enough, um, you know, if something can happen like that to a company, like Advocare that's been around as, you know, as long as, I mean, as long as in my adult life, um, then we need to pay attention. You know, this is something that is not, it's not going away. As a matter of fact, it's getting a little bit, you know, more strict as time goes on. The FDA, you know, really um, cracks down that is that the FDA and the, the FTC and just, you know, um, the powers that be, the internet, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but we have to pay attention to this. So, um, Kelly, you can go to the first slide. And we just want to go over, um, you know, some things that that are very important. We don't want to terrify you. We don't want to paralyze you. Um, but just so that we can kind of be aware of, you know, what the rules are and if we are or are not, you know, complying. Um, it says funny, but also not funny. Oh, great. Another compliance meeting. Like, I know this is not the most exciting call. Um, and this is being recorded because we knew that, you know, probably not everybody would get on th this call because they don't necessarily think it's super important, but it is very, very important. Okay. So... Brandy and I were chatting about a couple of like things and we did, agreed that we were going to admit to you guys that we're kind of learning with you. Um, there are plenty of teams who um, I think Kay sent us a message just a couple of days ago that she got a email from compliance saying, oh, this is not compliant. This is not compliant. This is not compliant. And it's, it's just because it's, it's being heightened. And so we want to bring it to you um, and, and let you know that we are not, we don't have all the answers. And this is just a, we're starting the conversation. Um, but here's what we have at play. Okay, we have Plexus Compliance Department and Plexus, the Compliance Department for Plexus, they're literally trying to protect us. They're trying to pre preserve the way we are doing business. They're trying to protect the future of the way we do business. And they're just trying to help us remain compliant. And when we say compliant, who are we being compliant to? We're being compliant to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration and the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. And so both of those agencies are in place to protect consumers right from fraudulent claims from um deceptive i have to well, also watch the waiting room from um like uh anything that could be deceptive or unfair um and just duping um the people and so because we are fda compliant because we are ftc compliant um and that's how we do business 
We want to make sure that we are not very excited for you. We want to make sure that we are not being fraudulent. We are not being misleading. We are not um, falling. uh, Nobody's falling prey to our, um, the way that we do business, because if people are falling prey to the way we, we do business, then that puts the way we do business in danger. And so while, um, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes we dismiss compliance. I, I'm here to tell you, uh, Lisa and I, when we went to leadership excellence, um, in, um, October, uh, Jen Biev stood on the stage and she like put the gauntlet down. Like it is not to be dismissed. This is right, whatever you have right now, whatever goals and hopes and dreams that you have for the future, truly, we do have to make sure that we are compliant because the FDA and the FTC, they have the power to shut us down in the way we do business, shut down the way we do business. So we just want to make sure that we are educating ourselves and um, doing the best that we can do to remain compliant. Yes. Okay. Um, product claims, you know, there, there's lots of, um, there's lots of things that Plexus can and does do. And we know this y'all, however, we cannot claim, um, that it helps any disease. We cannot claim that we can cure anything. Um, we, we actually, and we, we don't have it included here, but there's, there's actually a list of, um, flag, like red flag words that, you know, Plexus uses and probably the FDA and FTC to scan social media. Um, and they, they, that's how they find our post. I mean, at w- one time I got flagged on some posts that were done literally like three years before, uh, three years ago, like it's been a couple of years since they, they flagged my post, but they got me on, um, Twitter y'all. I'd never, I think I've made one or two posts on Twitter ever in my life. Twitter, like really, I I didn't even remember it was even there. And then also Instagram and Facebook. So once they find one, they start digging. And so, and it was just, it was just whatever program they use um, flagged my post. So I don't know that they, you know, they don't necessarily just sit there and, and think, okay, who can I find today? It's a program that they run. They're not trying to get you in trouble. I promise you, they're not going to like shut your account down unless you are, um, Unless, unless you don't change what they ask you to change. So they, when they message me and really everybody that I've talked to that, that they've ever, you know, contacted about their posts, they're very, very nice. They're, they show you exactly what you need to change. And they're, you know, they want to work with us. They don't, um, they realize, you know, that, I mean, we're doing the best we can, but sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes we post things that we shouldn't, even when we don't think, it's, that's the case. So you can put this statement um, that Kelly has on this slide. It says this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or pre- prevent any disease. Um, you know, whenever using Plexus approved dietary supplement claims. So technically, yes, we are supposed to be putting these statements anytime, you know, there's a post that has something to do with our products. Um, and we're guilty, you know, we don't always do that. And so that's something that we're going to work on ourselves. Um, again, we don't want to paralyze you for, and, and be like, oh my gosh, I have this post and I'm scared. I, you know, cause I, I think when this whole um, compliance thing came about, my team got really scared and, you know, they did kind of pull it back a little bit. I mean, they were extremely strict when it, when they, they first started cracking down and, um, but, you know, there are certain words that we are allowed to say now, like anxiety and um, depression. We can claim those with, with vital biome, so with certain products. But, you know, um, if you're in doubt, ask somebody and watch videos or, um, you know, just talk to your upline because, you know, again, we don't want you to be terrified and, and not post because you can still post. But there's just a way to word things that you can still get your point across without, um, without posting you know, anything that's going to cure anything or or use those red flag words. Right. So Brandy and I were talking about like, well, Hey, we don't do this. Right. So what we're sharing with you, this is like technically 
when you uh, you know post about the products, a you have you can only make a claim that is a um, accurate scientifically proven claim, right? And this is our disclaimer. And so this is what technically keeps you, you know, kind of safe whenever you're using plexus dietary supplement, whenever you're making a claim. Um, but we're going to show you at the end. So don't panic. We're going to show you at the end, like a very, very, very useful document that shows you all of the claims you can make. Um, and we're going to give you like words too, that will help to keep you safe. But this is right now, this is like product. We have product claims, uh, weight loss claims and, um, income claims. And we're just going to kind of show you the tech, the, this is a disclaimer, you know, throwing this at the end of your post, when in doubt, throwing this at the end of your post is, you know, technically that's kind of just the way to go, especially if you're, if you're, uh, public, right. So if your profile is public, um, especially if your profile is public, then and I don't do this every time. So, um, Brandy's like, well, how are we going to say this? If we don't do it every time, I, we, we have to do better. Right. So we're, we're moving towards doing better. Yes. Okay. So like, same thing with weight loss claims and here are the rules. Like if you're making a product claim, if you're making a weight loss claim, or if you're making an income claim, here's your kind of measure. Am I accurate? Am I being accurate? And am I, does it sound like I'm guaranteeing results? And there's a gray area. If it's, if it's implied, if it sounds like you're, you know, um, you know, not being accurate, if it sounds like you're guaranteeing results, there's an implied um, part there that we want to be careful of. And so here's the technical disclaimer for weight loss claims, because we can only make weight loss claims for slim and triplets, because those are the ones that we have scientifically, scientifically proven claims for. And so when you are making a weight loss claim with triplex or slim, again, here is the um, disclaimer and it's a little bit different and I can't read it. Because, Brandy, can you read it? Because I have all kinds of stuff over my screen. Oh, it says um, participants in an independent, randomized, double blind, placebo controlled human clinical study who use slim twice a day and BioCleanse and ProBio5 lost an average of 7.21 pounds in eight weeks, while the placebo group lost only an average of 0.19 pounds. Right. So that's our disclaimer. You know, you can copy and paste it and throw it on any time that you're making a weight loss claim, but that's the disclaimer. That's the technicality that makes us kind of, you know, safe. Right. Okay. Um, again, you know, income claims. Okay. This one is sticky as well. Um, I will say, and I don't know if you, you know, some of you guys were, were doing plexus at the time and some of you weren't, but back when we used to go to the Barbie dream house, um, down here in Destin, we had a couple of Ruby retreats there. And I will say that, um, compliance contacted Julia because, you know, that was implying that anyone could, um, you know, stay at this Barbie dream house if they wanted to. And we all know that technically that is true. If you want to stay there and um, have it gifted to you by your uplines, if you work hard enough, then you can. But in their eyes, um, that's, that's kind of making a claim that's not, it, it's elaborate gifts and we're not supposed to, um, I don't agree with it and don't shoot the messenger. It's just, we're not supposed to be making those claims because they don't want anyone to, um, they don't want people somehow to believe that they can actually do it. It's not, they don't want people, they don't want, you know, they want, don't want to say that no one can do this, but they don't want us to say that anyone can do this because for whatever reason, it makes people believe they can. We know they can, but, but we're not technically allowed to say that. And it's because we know, and if you read the disclaimer, we won't, I mean, you guys can read it too, but we know that there are other things that go into it, right? You have to harness your leadership qualities and be able to build a team and, you know, effort. And so there are other things that go into it besides just going, okay, I want it, right? You have to also be willing to do the work. And so that's kind of what the disclaimer um, covers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like the McDonald's, you know, people getting sued for like getting, drinking a cup of, cup of coffee and then suing McDonald's because the coffee's hot, right? It's like, I think it's, it's that kind of thing. Like we have to make sure we are yes. covering all of our bases. And I think that's one of the things that is the main thing that Avocare got in trouble with. It wasn't necessarily the products. It was, um, they, they used celebrities to, um, endorse their products. They were actually advertised at the Super Bowl that year. Um, 
and, and it was mostly income claims, even though people were making, you know, insane incomes. So, so, so here's just a short list of dues. And like Brandy said earlier, this is not to make, to make you scared at all. Um, it's just to educate you and it's to, you know, make sure that we are aware, right? This, the future of our business and the safety of our business really does reply, rely on us being compliant. So um, here are some things that can make you feel comfortable, make you feel safe. You can rely on the Plexus claims. And I'm going to show you that document in a minute and you can print it and you can have it um, and you can refer to it. And that will just kind of help you to, you know, take a deep breath. Um, and you do want to be accurate right? We want to refer to general body parts or systems um, versus um, diagnoses. And I'll show you those don't words in a minute. Um, so think of it like this, like when you look at do words, it says may, can, and could that juxtapose that to um, does and will and can, right? So we don't want to imply that we are curing, treating, or preventing anything. So when you say may or can or could, you're kind of taking that threshold of um, preventing or treating or curing something, all right? When instead of saying treats or you know cured or whatever, we can say it helps with, it supports such and such. Right. So using words like health and wellness and well-being and maintaining all of those words take us away from treating and curing and preventing to um, a safe zone. Right. Um, and then attaching the appropriate disclaimer to the product or the weight loss or the income is just another safety measure. If that disclaimer is there, um, then you are good to go. Yes. So saying that, you know, SLAM helps, um, it helps support, you know, healthy blood sugar, you know, blood sugar that's already in the normal range. Right. We so know. we're going to show you a couple of examples, how you can use both, how you can use a disclaimer, like what your post might sound like. Go ahead, Brandy. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This is just an example of what you can say. So I just tried Plexus Edge. I love having healthy, sustained energy all day long. I managed to clean my entire house in no time at all without taking a single break. And then of course, having the disclaimer at the bottom, that doesn't make any kind of claim. I mean, it just says you have energy and sustained energy. It's not going to say that, um, you know, I, I was so tired before I had fibromyalgia and it was horrible, but now I have energy. You can't, you know, th this is implying that whatever you had before, um, doesn't matter. You just have energy now. So, um, that's just a, a great way to, to and say the people it. who have fibromyalgia or other diseases that cause them to be lethargic, they're still going to read your post and they're still going to be like, Oh, I would like to have energy too. So, um, yes. Uh, and technically you can, I'm sorry. That's okay. I was just gonna say, you can s still say whatever you want in private messages for now. Um, right. And yeah. in messenger and right. you know, when you meet up for coffee or whatever. Yes. Um, and so then here's an example for the uh, weight loss claim. So you could be like Plexus Triplex is amazing. I've been using it for eight weeks and I have lost however many pounds. I can't read it because I have all these blocks, but um, so there's the weight. You can use that weight loss claim because we have science to prove it. It is a Plexus claim. Um, but technically, again, they want you to attach that um, disclaimer and um, but again, this is an example of being safe and being compliant and following the rules. Yes. I, don't, I won't read it to you again, but. Okay. And then this is the income example. Yes. With Plexus, I was able to sign up my daughter for dance lessons, something she's been dreaming of for years. Okay. This is not like a huge claim. This is just, you know, saying it doesn't say how much it costs. And then we have to be very careful about, you know, posting. I've seen people post before, you know, like their um, clips of their paycheck, like how much they made. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. So um, you could, you know, ask people if they want to see your paycheck and you'll send it to them privately, but um, you can't, you know, say exactly how much you made. You want to think about your your feed is just this conversation starter and piquing their interest, right? Without um, going into the details. Yes. And there, 
there used to be a page, and I, I don't know if they still have it, the, the page that had all of the compliant testimonies. Do they still have that, Kelly? I don't know. I used I don't to know. know there was one, but I, I thought I heard them taking it down. I don't know. But anyway, um, if you look on my team page, I know that I, I used to post all the time the hashtag compliant testimony. And so you can do a search and there should be tons on my team page. I probably should do that again. And you know what uh, I do is I, when I find a testimony that I really love that I want to post so badly, I'll read it and then I'll just paraphrase it, right? And not put their words in it. And I'll just be like, look at my friends, such and such. And I'll just kind of paraphrase their tes testimony and just turn it into a compliant version. Um, and then, you know, I can share whoever I'm trying to, to reach or talk to, I can share their words with them. But um, it's the more you do it, just like anything, the more you do something, the better you get at it. Um, yes. All right, so we gave you a list of do's. Is it your turn, Brandy? Yeah, I think so. Okay, just um, this is a list of things that you cannot say, uh, you can't suggest. Of course, we've already kind of gone all, all it over all these, but you can't suggest that any product can cure, prevent, or treat disease. You can't make claims that aren't substantiated by science. So um, Plexus, if they have studies, um, it, you know, it will say that in back office. And if you're unsure, we can um, contact you know, corporate and find out for sure exactly what um, the claims are that we can make. Um, also, you cannot share testimonials about how someone treated a disease. So if someone, you know, I, I do know there are a lot of, um, of course, there's tons of testimonies out there, but just take Lyme disease for one. Um, those are very powerful testimonies, but technically we're not allowed to share those publicly, unfortunately, um, because it says the word Lyme disease in it. And because we don't have science, to, we, um, don't have a, we don't, we can't make that claim because we don't have clinical studies right. on it. Yes. Um, I, you know, we do know that, I mean, we, I know personally people who have, um, you know, completely, almost all their symptoms are completely gone because of plexus, but we just can't say that publicly. Um, okay, don't words, there, these certain words, I'm, I wanna jot these down as disease, treat, prevent, repair, or chronic, um, or any specific illness or diagnosis and specific treatment or medications, like we cannot say medication names, like not even over-the-counter medications like Tylenol or Tums, or we're just not allowed to say those things. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, so Brandy has referred very a few times to the claims, and um, this document um, is, uh, like I said, I think you should print it. You should have it, you know, handy because it really takes um, all of the the verbiage um, that you want to say and turns it into like words that you can actually use. Um, and so if you kind of scroll down, this is in your back office, um, but it gives you um, just the three categories, okay? So unacceptable claim, implied disease claim, and this is gray area. You're not supposed to do this either, anything that's implied. So for somebody who, um, you know, it improves uh, joint mobility, it reduces joint inflammation and pain. Um, what you can say is it supports overall joint health and mobility, right? So, I mean, that works. It's, it's an easy an easy fix. So having this printed out and having it handy will just kind of help you to make sure that you are um, staying compliant. Um, I don't know, Brandy, if you want to talk about how when your Facebook profile is public versus uh, private. So mine was private forever. And when I wanted to really, um, you know, expand my network and grow my business, I decided, okay, it's time. I'm going to be compliant and I'm going to go um, public. And so I really am careful. I, in preparing for this call, I know that there are many things that I'm not doing um, well enough technically. Um, and so, like I said, I'm learning too. Um, but what, what do you think, Brandy, about like the, ver if your Facebook, we used to say, if your Facebook, profile is private, then you really can take a breath and don't have to worry quite so much. Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to give license to people to be like, oh, I don't have to worry about compliance. Right. You know, um, 
I mean, to protect yourself, um, like again, I, you know, I, I'm not giving you permission to do that, but that's what I would do. I personally is, you know, make your, your, um, post. You don't have to make your whole Facebook private, but you can make certain posts if you're, you know, worried that compliance, you know, might contact you about it, then you could make it private. But we, either way, we still have to be careful, y'all, because there may be people on your Facebook you don't even realize. And I, you know, I, I can't, I don't think that there's anybody that I know of that would, you know, on purpose, just turn somebody in for a simple, you know, Facebook post. But, um, you know, if you're worried and you want to protect yourself. Now, I will say, if, if compliance does contact you, first thing, do not panic. Okay. It is totally fine. They are only doing their job and they are there to help you. Um, they will tell you exactly what you need to do and just follow their directions and it's over. Like it is not that big of a deal. Don't, um, because this happened to a girl one time, she panicked and all of a sudden, like in the middle of the investigation, because that's what they call it is, I mean, they're, you know, they're just um, checking out your post until it's closed. Do not go and make your, your um, profile private wait until the whole thing is done then you know once they close it out then if you want to make your profile private you can but they will shut down your account if you do that because it then it appears like you're trying to hide something you don't want them to see something so um you know as long as it's before they contact you or after they contact you then you're fine but um i just want to throw that out there because it did happen to one of my ambassadors one time and it was kind of scary I'm going to copy that link and put it in the chat so you guys can copy it and just have it before we leave. But I think this is another thing that is really helpful is um, if you are, um, if you've been paying attention like to recent training, we talk about like adding that layer of curiosity and not just be, like, look at me in my pink drink, look at me in Plexus. Look at, if you just highlight how you're healthier because you're taking these amazing supplements, don't use Plexus. You don't have to use Plexus and the verbiage of all of your posts. Um, you know, so very oftentimes I just, I'm like all that from a handful of supplements or um, natural supplements. Like people, if they've been watching you for any amount of time and they, and you're highlighting the fact that you are taking these natural supplements and now you have energy and you're cleaning your house and now you have energy and you're not needing that. You don't have to like land base your posts with the word plexus mm -hmm. and you're adding intrigue and curiosity and FOMO. And you can have all of these conversations in messenger. Um, you don't have to like give up everything on your Facebook profile. Um, and I think that as actually is a win-win if you, um, you know, just kind of keep a little bit of it back. You don't want to be making all those claims because I think that actually appears a little bit salesy. Um, yes. Yes. So that will actually, thinking of it that way kind of takes away some of those claims that you would be otherwise making. And it's going to, you know, like she said, pique somebody's curiosity if they don't know that you do Plexus, but they see that, oh my gosh, she's like, she's running now, or she's working out now, or she's lost some weight, or she's, you know, I can tell she feels better. They're going to message you and see what you're doing instead of just, some, oh, she does plexus and scrolling by. They're going to actually be curious and want to know what you're doing. So it's kind of, it's a conversation starter as well. Is that the last slide, Kelly? That was it. Yeah. Um, and I can't, I was going to grab that link, but I can't while, while we're, while we're recording. So if we're done recording, or if we're done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Then I'll grab that and throw that in there so they can grab it before they leave.